Hey there! This video is part of a collaboration series I did with some other amigurumi artists that you might like. It's part of a fundraiser we're doing for Earth Day. We're raising money for the World Wildlife Foundation, whose mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to diversity of life on Earth. Each of us made a crochet pattern with a few different endangered amigurumi creatures. The videos will be up here throughout the next month, but you can also download the PDF version by donating to the World Wildlife Fund. To get the downloadable PDFs with full video tutorials for each of these three patterns, visit clubcrochet.com slash earthday2021. 100% of donation downloads will be going directly to the organization and 20% of kit sales and new membership signups for the rest of the month. Enjoy the patterns! Hey there, it's Louie and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to crochet Ruby the Red Panda. This pattern is by the incredible amigurumi artist Lemon Yarn Creations, also known as Andrea, as part of our Earth Day fundraiser for the World Wildlife Fund. Red pandas are arguably the cutest animals ever, and Andrea did an amazing job at capturing that adorableness in this pattern. But did you know that red pandas are actually an endangered species? We could lose one of the cutest animals ever, which would be devastating for so many reasons. If you like nature and our planet, which I'm guessing you do, I highly encourage you donate to the World Wildlife Fund, who are helping to protect our planet, including the red pandas. You can do so by checking out the links in the description or by donating to download the written PDF versions of this pattern. There are also some other patterns by myself and another ama amazing amigurumi artist, Sir Pearl Gray, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. But let's talk about this pattern for now. Okay, well, for this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. I'm using the following colors. I'm using uh, red. I call this country red. You also need some off-white. That's going to be for the ears and the snout here and some of the markings on the tail and the face. You'll need brown for the limbs and the body. You'll see you also need country red for the body. Um, because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size G 4mm crochet hook. You'll need some safety bead eyes. I'm using 8mm safety bead eyes. Oh, I forgot. You're going to need just a little bit of pink yarn for the little tongue here. Um, stuffing, of course, you'll need some stuffing. A darning needle. I like using a crimped end darning needle like this. It helps me get in and out of hard to reach st stitches. And some uh, pipe cleaners. These aren't absolutely necessary necessary but it helps you make the arms poseable so you can shape them however you, you would um you would like if you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that i just listed um i have them available in the shop you can find a link in the description below and a portion of your purchase goes to the world wildlife fund as well and uh what else um oh make sure to check out lemon yarn creations on instagram i'll have links to her stuff in the description uh she is an amazing amy groom artist and makes some really really adorable stuff so really check her out she's really cool and uh thank you so much for making this with us andrea i really really like this pattern a lot i mean look at how cute he is all right well without further ado let's get hooking um we're gonna start by crocheting our head Okay, so we're going to start with a head, and you want to start with your country red yarn, and we're going to start with a magic loop. Now, in this pattern, we're going to be using the magic loop for pretty much every single part of this pattern. So, uh, I'm only going to be showing you in detail how to do the magic loop one time, and it's going to be right now. So, later on in the video, if you're like, oh, how do I do the magic loop again? Jump back to this time code, and I'll, I'll explain it better here than I will be able to do it in every single part of this pattern. All right, so we're going to start with the magic loop. To do the magic loop, I'm going to hold it, uh, pinch the yarn down so that it's facing towards the ground with my middle and thumb finger. And then I'm going to go around my index and middle finger like that, come back around and make an X on the front like that, and then go back around the back side. So this way we have an X on the front and on the back we have two parallel bars. Okay, then we're going to take the end here and we're going to pinch it with our pinky and our ring finger and then just close it in like that. And then you can hold it on the back and take your crochet hook. And with the crochet hook, we're going to go under the first bar and hook onto the second and pull that second bar under the first like that. And then kind of do a little twist to make it a little loop. So that's a little loop there. And then we'll go over the first bar and hook onto the second. I like to use my index finger to help guide the yarn over my crochet hook like that. 
And then with your crochet hook, we're gonna pull it through the loop that you made. The easiest way to do that is to kind of scoop it in like that. And that creates a chain and will lock the yarn in place so now you can pull it off of your fingers. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna work all of our stitches in our first round around these two um, pieces of yarn right there. And then at the end, we're gonna pull this tail end tight and it'll close the hole and uh, make it really small so you don't have to notice any hole in the very beginning. All right, so that's how you do the magic loop. Now we'll start with round one of the head. Okay, so for round one, we're gonna start by single crocheting six times into the magic loop. That's pretty simple. I use that in a lot of my patterns. We're gonna go into the center of the loop with your crochet hook, hook onto the, the end attached to the ball of yarn like that, pull it under the loop, Yarn over again, going over the loop. Yarn over with the yarn attached to the ball and pull that through the two loops on the hook, like that. That's gonna create a single crochet. The majority of this pattern is made with this stitch, so, so you're gonna to have to get used to this stitch throughout this pattern. All right, so we wanna do six of those single crochets into this magic loop. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, and now that we have six stitches on the hook, um, if you wanna count back your stitches, the best way to do that is look for the Vs. Um, don't count this uh, loop that's attached to the hook right there, but under that loop, you can start to see little Vs. See, one, two, three, four, five and six so that's the first single crochet we made and you want to really keep track of where that first one is made um, because we're going to be working into that stitch for round two but once you're sure that you have six stitches you can take this tail end and pull it nice and tight and it will create a nice tight hole there and then we can continue on that'll be the end of round one Okay, going forward, we're gonna to want to grab a little um, spare thread of some kind of yarn, and we're gonna use this as a stitch marker so we can keep track to where the end of the rounds are. What we wanna do is we'll just hold this into place in between where the loop is on the hook, like that, and the rest of the piece. And this way we can work around it for our first stitch and it will mark where the end of our round is. Um, but also in round two, we wanna work around this tail end just for a few stitches. So we're gonna hold that one over our stitches so that we work around this as we're going. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of skip this, this uh, stitch marker, but work around this tail end just for a few stitches. Okay, so for round two, we're gonna be do some, doing something called an increase into each stitch around. Now there were six single crochets into the last round. What you wanna start is find your first single crochet, which is gonna be this one right there. This pattern is worked in, a, in the round, meaning that we're working in a spiral without ever turning. So you don't need to turn at all. Hence why it's really useful to have a stitch marker. So once you're into your first stitch here, we're going to do an increase stitch. An increase means that we're going to do, be doing two single crochets into the exact same stitch. And we wanna work around this tail end. So we're gonna place this tail end over where you're gonna work your stitch and we wanna loop onto the end that's attached to the ball of yarn, yarn over, and pull that through the two loops in the stitch right there. And then yarn over again and pull that through the stitches to make a single crochet. An increase is just two single crochets in the exact same stitch. So there's one single crochet. And then the second one is gonna go right where the first one went. So if you look, you can see a little V of the stitch here and that's going into this stitch right there, and that's where we wanna work another single crochet for our first increase. So we're gonna get our hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull that through, yarn over again, and pull through the two loops on the hook to make the second single crochet in our first increase. Now that we worked around this tail end just for a few stitches, we could just pull it to the side. Um, we're gonna do something fancy with it a little bit later, but for now we can just totally ignore it and we wanna work an increase into each stitch around. So that's six increases total, which is two single crochets per increase, which means you're making 12 single crochets total till we get to the end of the round. So this is the first one. Now let's go into our second stitch, which is gonna be right here. 
yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. There's our first single crochet of our second increase. Now let's do another one into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two. There's a second increase done. Let's do a third increase right here, single crochet one, into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two, and there's our third increase done. Just a few more. Here's our fourth increase. This is gonna be our first single crochet of our fourth increase. Let's do another one into the same exact stitch. You can kind of see where the stitch is when you pull it out a little bit. See how there's that little opening right there? That's where you wanna put that crochet hook into. And there's our fourth single increase. Here's our fifth increase. And this is gonna be our last increase right here to our last stitch. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round two. Now, before I continue, a few things. First off, we wanna pull this stitch marker up so that this tail end is just barely there. So just have a little bit left over of that tail end. And then we're gonna place it over the stitch like that. So that way we can work around it in our next uh, round, just so it keeps track of the end of the round. And then also we want to take this tail end and thread it onto our needle. And we're just going to go straight through the very center right here. And it's going to come out through the top like that. And that's going to create um, the start of a little tuft of hair that's going to come out the top of his head. And we're going to cut this just a little short, like let's go like right there. You don't need to add this tuft of hair. I just think it looks really cute. Um, here it is on the finished guy. You can see how he's got this little tuft of hair. That's what we're making. Okay. All right, now we're on to round three. And round three, we're going to be doing a repeat of doing a single crochet into the first stitch and then an increase into the second stitch. And we're gonna repeat that around six times, which is gonna bring you up from 12 stitches to 18 stitches. So let's start that repeat with our first one. Let's go into this first stitch here and we'll do a single crochet. Now we'll go into the next stitch right there. And this stitch, we're going to do an increase, meaning two single crochets. So there's one and two. Okay, so we have a single crochet, then an increase. And we wanna repeat that process six times in a row um, so that it goes all the way to the end we keep doing a single crochet, then an increase, single crochet, increase. And this is going to bring us up in stitches. So let's do our second repeat. Next stitch right here, single crochet, and then an increase. There's one and two. Another repeat, single crochet, and then an increase. And like I said, this is going to bring you up from 12 stitches. That's what you had at the end of round two to 18 so that we should have 18 stitches by the end of this round by doing these this little repeat okay single crochet increase there's one single crochet and two single crochets for an increase one more repeat single crochet and an increase and now's your chance. I would count your stitches if you're uh, more of a beginner so that you make sure that you have 18 stitches around now. Okay, so for round four, we're going to pull our stitch marker up and place it over the round like this so that we work around it. And we're going to do a single crochet into our first two stitches and then an increase. So we're gonna do the same repeat as before, but instead of doing one single crochet before increase, we're gonna do two. So it's one, two, and then an increase. Let's do that, and we'll re repeat that all the way around until we get to the end. Six repeats total. So let's do our first one right here. One single crochet, two, and then an increase. There's one and two, okay? Single crochet, single crochet, increase, repeated six times around. Let's do our second repeat. There's one, two, and then an increase. And every time we're adding an increase, we're adding a stitch to the end of our round. So by doing six repeats here, with an increase in each repeat, it's going to add six stitches to the end of our round, 
which means we're going to go up from 18 stitches in round 3 to 24 stitches in round 4. Okay, so I'm on my, I think this is my fourth repeat, two single crochets, and then an increase. And we're going to stay at 24 stitches for just a little while, so we can stick around at 24 stitches for a bit. And there's another increase. And here's our last repeat. One, two, and then our increase. Okay. And two, increase. You can kind of tell where an increase is versus a single crochet. By looking at the top of the stitch, look for these little Vs. Okay, so this V right here is a single crochet. There's another single crochet. And if you look at this one, you can see there's two Vs going into one space. There's just one V going into one space. There's two going into one space. When you see two going into one space, that means it's an increased stitch. It's an easy way for you to count your stitches um, like really easily. So you can go... Okay, I did one, two single crochets, and then that's an increase because you can see there's two jammed into one space. This is also how I crochet without using a stitch marker. Instead of using a stitch marker, what I do is I look at where the last increase is so I know where the end of the round is. This is something that comes with practice. Um, so for now, if you're a beginner, I would highly suggest using a stitch marker, but it can be pretty cool later on to try crocheting without a stitch marker and force yourself to find where your stitches are. Okay, so that was the end of round four. Now we're on to round five and six. So two rounds in a row, five and six. We're just gonna do a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So you just need to do 24 single crochets in each round. So that's pretty easy. I'm working around my stitch marker to keep track of my progress and I'm just going to keep doing single crochets into each stitch. And there should be 24 stitches around for each round. So I'll go ahead and do these two rounds of just single crochets really quick, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round six and our two rounds of single crochets. And if you look in here, you see that um, if you follow this last stitch down, you see there's a single crochet, there's a single crochet, and then this one's an increase because you got two in there. So that's the last increase from round uh, four. And then that's these are the last single crochets from the last two rounds. So that's, again, how I find out where the end of the round is. Okay, now let's hold our stitch marker, pull it up like that, and we will do round, uh, let's see, round seven. For round seven, we're doing three single crochets and then an increase. So you do three single crochets, one, two, three, and then you want to do an increase into the next stitch right here. And there's one and two single crochets in the same stitch. And then you're going to repeat that process all the way around six times in a row. So three single crochets and then an increase repeated all the way around. Let's do a second repeat. One, two, three, and then an increase. One and two. And that's going to bring you up from 24 stitches to 30 stitches at the end of round seven. Is there another increase? One, two, three, and then our increase. And this is going to make our head just go a little bit wider so that it like slowly gets wide for the face. Oh, I missed an increase here. Um, how I can tell that is because, so here was my last increase right there, and I missed an increase right here. And the reason I can tell is because this was an increase from um, round four, and then there's round five, round six, and this is round seven. There should be an increase right here to match up with that other increase. So that's how I can tell that I missed one right there. So I pull out just a little bit, and then I put another single crochet into that same stitch to make up for my stitch count. 
Okay, there's three, and then our last increase right here. Okay, and that'll be the end of round seven. Pull our stitch marker up. Now for our next three rounds, rounds eight, nine, and 10, three rounds in a row, you just wanna do a single crochet into each stitch around. So place our stitch marker up, and we'll just do a single crochet all the way around. There should be 30 stitches per round. So just 30, um, 30 stitches around for three rounds in a row, all just single crochets. Nice break from doing increases. Or um, I like I like rounds where you just do single crochets because you don't really need to think too much about it. You can just keep going. And hey, before I quickly cut to the end of this part, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do so. Um, these videos take a long time for me to make, and uh, yeah, I just I think if you like it, please like it down below. Subscribe to the channel. I do videos like this all the time, and uh, yeah, I hope you like this video. Also. If you are interested, please comment down below and let me know what you like most about this pattern or what which one of these endangered species patterns you like the most. Really, any feedback is good feedback. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round 10, our three rounds of single crochets. We'll pull a stitch marker up. Actually, we can kind of leave the stitch marker there because next we want to add um, some safety bead eyes. Uh, so we want to add our eyes, basically. So the eyes, let's grab our safety bead eyes right here. The eyes are going to go in between rounds uh, eight and nine. So if you count um, up, we just finished round 10. So that would be into this round right here. So this is round eight. That's round nine. We want to put them into in between these two rounds there. And you want there to be five stitches um, between the eyes. So what I think is best is just choose a place where it's like on the opposite side of the end of your round. So about like, yeah, about like right there. And we'll go ahead and place our first eye there. And then you want to have five stitches in between. So one, two, wait, one, two, three, four, five. And then another eye right here. And then we'll put, we'll use this space in between to crochet on a snout. But once you have those eyes into place, I think that's, yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. You can take this little locking mechanism and just lock those eyes into place. One. And two. Okay. All right, now we can keep on going. Let's get our stitch marker up and keep crocheting around. Okay, so now in our next round, round 11, we're actually gonna start decreasing down. So where we were increasing up, now we wanna start decreasing down to close the head up. To do that, we're gonna start by single crocheting three and then doing something called an invisible decrease, which I'll show you when we get to. And then we're gonna repeat that process all the way around, continually repeating it, just like how we did with our increase repeats. But instead of doing an increase, we're doing a decrease. So we're gonna start by doing three single crochets. One, two, and three. And now we wanna do an invisible decrease. This is my favorite decrease to do. You wanna take your crochet hook and we wanna go only into the front loops of the next two stitches. If you look at the top of your stitch, you'll see two different loops right there, right? This one is the back loop because it's furthest away from you. And this one is the front loop that is closest to you. So we want to work only into the front loop of both of these stitches with our crochet hook and then do a single crochet into that for an invisible decrease. So the best way to do that, I find, is take your crochet hook and going from the bottom, poke it up like that. See how I'm only through one of those two loops? And then scoop your crochet hook around, make it do a little loop so that you're positioned to go right from under it and poke up through the second front loop too. So now we're into both of those two front loops and then we take your yarn and we're gonna pull, we're gonna pull through these two front loops. The best way I find is to just really scoop it through those like that. And now once you have that loop through there, we yarn over and pull through two. And that's an invisible decrease. 
I'll be doing that again in just a second because we want to repeat that process of three single crochets, then an invisible decrease, six times repeated around. So let's do our second repeat. Three single crochets, one, two, three. And now is our next invisible decrease. We go front loop up from the bottom, then loop around so we get into position up from the bottom, boop, and then do a single crochet and make sure to really scoop it through those stitches. Okay, there's our second repeat. Let's do another one. Three single crochets, one, two, three, front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through. One, oops, two, three, and then we go front loop, front loop, there we go. Now, every time we do a decrease, we're doing the opposite of an increase, hence the name. So we're removing a stitch from our round instead of adding a stitch into our round. Because of that, we had 30 stitches around from around 10, but because we're putting six invisible decreases into this round, we're going down six stitches, so we're going back down to 24 stitches. So you should have 24 stitches at the end of this round, which is right there. You see how it's kind of pulling it in now, or slowly closing it up. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round 11. You might wanna count your stitches now, make sure you did all your invisible decreases correctly. Now, invisible decreases are more difficult to notice on your stitches than an increase is, in my opinion. So this is an increase with your two stitches in there. This is a decrease. It, the only way you can kind of tell is that under the V, it just kind of looks like, I don't know, I don't know, it's just, it's like a little bit noticeable, but it's really hidden. Hence, hence why I really like this stitch. Okay, so we're gonna pull our stitch marker up and we are on to round 12 now. And we want to do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease and repeat that six times around. So let's start with two single crochets, one, two, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, pull through. And let's do that repeat again. We're doing six repeats of that, just like our last round, but instead of doing three, we're doing two single crochets before we do our decrease. One, two, there we go. One, two single crochets, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. And ours are invisible decreases. And this is gonna bring you down another six stitches. So we're going down from 24 stitches in round 11 to 12 stitches at the end of round uh, 12 here. So 12 stitches for round 12. I mean, 18, I'm sorry, 18 stitches. Uh, you should have 18 stitches by the end of this round. There you go, and there's our last invisible decrease. Pull through and pull through. Okay, we're just gonna pull that. I'm just gonna pull my stitch out just a little bit because next up we're going to add a few face patches on our little guy here. Um, here, you can kind of see on our finished one here. We're just gonna sew, we're gonna embroider on these little white parts um, for the face. So what you wanna do is we wanna grab just a little bit of our white yarn. You really don't need too much, it's probably probably fine. We might need to come back for a little bit more, but we'll find out in a sec. And we want to thread this onto our needle. And the first thing we want to do, let's keep our, our finished one in front of us right now so we can make sure we're putting them into the right places. The first thing I want to do is let's start by doing the cheeks on the side of our character's face. So what we want to do is we want to do um, two stitches aw away from each eye. So there's an eye, one, two. So starting out right there. And then going down two rounds. We'll pull that through until there's just a little bit left over of your thread. We're gonna go down two rounds, one, two. Go through, come back up through where you're coming through. We're gonna double it up like that. And then back down through that 
It'll be a nice thick little cheek right there. And then you can just double knot these two ends on the inside and uh, cut it cut it close. So we'll take these two ends. We'll go with uh, one knot and two like that. And then we're just gonna cut this nice and close on the inside. Like, huh, like that. Okay. And we're gonna do that to the other side as well. There's the eye. We go one, two stitches away from the eye. And then we're gonna go two rounds down, but I want, it to, I want the cheeks to be kind of pointed more into the face. You see, so I want it to be pointed more in towards the face. So what I'm going to do is, if I went two rounds down perfectly, and went one, two, it would be right there. But see, that's going to pull the cheek out just a little bit that way. We want it to be pulled in a little bit this way. So I'm going to go right here instead. And then repeat that once to make it just a little bit thicker. There we go. Now we got our little cheeks on there. We can double knot these. One, two, and cut it nice and close. And then the next thing we want to do is add our little eyebrows there. So our eyebrows go just above the eye. So we want to just go a few stitches up above the eye. Let's start like right there. And we'll pull out and then go one, two stitches over, and then a stitch up from where you came out, and then back down to make a V that's pointed inwards towards the face. And it looks a little bit like an angry eye, just a little bit, but I don't know. I just think it looks so cute. And, and red, pandas, red pandas actually have these, um, these facial features as well. Okay, we'll take this and double knot it on the inside. One, try not to double knot it too tightly or else it'll pull your stitches in. And I'll show you kind of what I mean once I finish this one. Cut those kind of close. And see how it's kind of just pulling my face in a little bit? That's, um, you wanna avoid that as much as possible. I didn't do it much right there, so you can't really see it too much, but like if you tie it really tight, it'll pull those stitches in. You don't really want that. Okay, and then we want another eye, um, just a few stitches over on this side. Make sure that each eyebrow is in the same row, you know, so they're they're lined up together. And I'm going to start, let's start right here. Oops, right here. We'll do the same exact thing. So we'll go over a few stitches, then up a stitch. I actually, yeah, let's try right there. Let's see how it goes. Like that, and then back down through where it's coming out, like that. Yeah, that's pretty good, I like it. It's gonna look really cute when we get that snout and stuff on. Let's double knot these. One. And there's two double knots. We can cut it pretty close on the inside. Like that. And there we go. We have our little facial features on there. And we can continue around. Before I continue on to um, our next round, let's go ahead and stuff it just a little bit. You don't need too much stuffing right now. And then we'll stuff it again right before um, we sew it closed. We'll just add a little bit of stuffing for now. Because it's just easier to get in there while we have it opened a little bit more. There we go. You see how the head is shaped, see? Because we did those increases in the top to get a basic size, and then we went down, and then we increased it out a little bit, which gives us these nice little cute cheeks. Okay. Let's get our crochet hook back in there and pull our stitch marker up and now we are on to round 13 let's get our main 
our finished one out of the way. So we're on to round 13. For round 13, we're going to do one single crochet and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, and then single crochet. And we want to repeat that process of a single crochet, then an invisible decrease all the way around. So six repeats of that all the way. Let's do a single crochet. This is our second repeat. And then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, pull through, pull through. And this is going to bring you down from 18 stitches to 12 stitches. So you should have 12 stitches by the end of round 13 here. Get a little bit more yarn. Single crochet, front loop, front loop, pull through, pull through. Single crochet, front loop, front loop. Single crochet, and then our last decrease right here. There we go. Now you should have 12 stitches around. See, it's really getting closed in now. And we are on our last round. I'm just going to, I'm not going to use our stitch marker now because we are only have one more round here. And for our final round, we want to do an invisible decrease six times. So six inv invisible decreases to go around, which will bring you down from 12 stitches to six stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just do front loop. It's easiest now to pinch it kind of close like this. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Front loop, front loop, there we go. Single crochet, and then front loop. There we go, there's our third, I believe. Yeah. Front loop, front loop, and don't worry about like pinching it pinching your um, head too much and like disfiguring it or something. Don't worry about that. This is cotton. It's very forgiving. We can, we can fix our red panda up in just a second. There we go. And then one last one. This last one's kind of hard to see. It's right here. Front loop. Front loop. This last front loop might be difficult, so you might want to use your nail to kind of help pry the front loop over the crochet hook. And then to our last decrease. Okay, now we can cut the yarn. You don't need very long of an end because we're just going to use this to sew it uh, closed. We're just gonna pull it all the way out and then we wanna finish up by stuffing our piece a little bit more. So you can see how it's pretty deflated right now. We don't want that. So I like to take my, the back of my crochet hook. I like using a rubber crochet hook for this. Um, if you don't have that, use a pencil with an eraser end and that should work just fine. And then I'm just going to add some more stuffing in the bottom. And you want to be careful not to stuff the head up too much because if you stuff your character too much, you'll start to see the stuffing poking through the st stitches actually. And you don't want that. So you, you don't want to overstuff it, but obviously you don't want to understuff it either. It's a fine line. You want to make sure you get all the little nooks and crannies of the head stuffed up. Let's add this last bit here. And then we'll test it out and make sure that it's stuffed as much as we want. It looks like we might want a little bit more in the bottom there, but let's, yeah, just a little bit more. It's, it's kind of loose here. So you can kind of see how it like holds in there. We don't want that. We want it to, we want it to have a little bit of a fight back and to keep it shape. So we'll add a little bit more, especially in the back. How's that? Eh, we could just add just the tiniest bit more, just like that much more. Okay. And then what we want to do is sew this head closed. So we're going to thread this end on a needle. And to sew it closed, all you got to do is go into all the front loops around and then pull it tight. So we go into the front loop of the next stitch right here. 
and just do that for each of the front loops. Next front loop. Next front loop. Last one right there. And, oops, keep it on the needle. And then you could just pull it tight and it'll close that up like that. And take this end, go straight through the center. And with this end, we wanna come out through the top to add another hair tuft. Like that. Okay, and now we can cut these ends so that they're a little bit shorter so the hair tuft looks a little bit cuter. So we'll go like right there maybe. Right, we can always cut away, but we can't add to it, so we don't want to cut it too much. And I like to like push the top of it to kind of um, de-thread these ends to make the hair tuft a little bit more. There we go. Okay, the last bit, we want to get rid of our stitch marker. So I'm just going to go through each of these stitches, and we can actually just pull it out. There we go. So we got the main part of our head done. The next thing we want to do is make all of the pieces of our head and then we can sew the face together. So we'll put these to the side and we're going to start by crocheting our snout. Okay, so for our snout, we want to use our off-white yarn here. And we're going to start the snout the exact same way as we started the, um, the head. So we're going to start with our magic loop. And like I said before, if you need some more help on how to do the magic loop, skip back to the start of our head and um, that will be my best explainer for this video. Okay, now once you have the magic loop ready, all you need to do is start round one, the exact same as we started round one of our head. We want to single crochet six times into the magic loop. So we're just going to add six single crochets. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we can pull this end nice and tight, close that hole up, and throw that to the side. Now we don't really need to work around this like we did for our head because we don't need a little hair tuft coming out of the snout um, like we did for our head. So we can kind of just leave it to the side there. And for round two, there's only going to be three rounds total, so I'm not going to use a stitch marker. But for round two, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase and repeat that two times total. So just two times total. So let's go into our first stitch right here, and we'll do a single crochet in the first one. And then here's our next stitch, single crochet in the second stitch. And then in the third stitch, we'll do an increase. So we'll do two single crochets into one stitch. There's one and two. So single crochet, single crochet, increase, and we're going to repeat that one more time. Single crochet into the next stitch, another single crochet, and then an increase right here. There's one and two. Okay. That's going to be the end of round two for the snout. Now for round three, we're going to do pretty much the same thing as we did in round two, but instead of doing two single crochets and then an increase, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase. So we'll do three single crochets. There's one, two, and three, and then an increase right here. Four, and five. So four and five are in the same stitch. And then we're going to repeat that one more time. Three single crochets. One, two, three, and then our increase. Four and five. And that's going to be, you should have 10 stitches by the end of round three there. That's going to be the end of round three. All you need to do now is slip stitch into the next stitch. This is a new stitch. We haven't done this yet, but uh, this is how you do it. You go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, like as if you were doing a single crochet. But now, instead of yarning over and pulling through again, you want to take that first loop that you made and pull that through the loop on the hook like so. It's kind of like half of a single crochet. And now we can cut the yarn. You want enough of an end so that it's easy to sew it onto the face. So about that length, this should be good. We just pull it through like that. 
and now you have a little snout. Now the next thing we want to do before we um, add the rest of it is we want to add some uh, the nose. Now I I kind of think it's easiest to sew it onto the face before we add the nose so that you can make sure that the nose is correctly in place. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to end up sewing it onto the face right here. Um, and it'll be in between each of the eyes. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and let's go ahead and do that re real quick. And then we can add all of our pieces on as we're going. So we're going to start by threading the middle of the snout, thread that on a needle, and we want this to go directly in between our stitches. So we've got five stitches, right? One, two, three, four, five. So the third one right here, we want to go in and we'll come out somewhere along the bottom right here. Just make sure it's not in between two, like it's like that, in between two stitches, not inside of a stitch. Like that. And this will help keep your nose into place. And we want the end of our nose to be closer to the bottom of our state, our, our piece. So we want it to be this part to come on the bottom like that. And we just want to sew this onto all of our stitches here. Now the best way I find to sew things on is find your first stitch, come out of your next one on the face like that. Okay, and that'll help keep it in place and then calculate where you want your stitches to be. So I th we have 10 stitches around on the snout, right? So we got one will be right here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 stitches around on the snout, which means we need 10 places to place the, um, the stitches into the face. Okay, we have one right here, that's gonna be our last one, and we have a second one right here. So we know where our first one is, and we know where our last one is, and we wanna work all the way around in a spiral um, so that we end where our first one is. So we need 10 stitches, right? So we've got one, two, let's go three will be here, and then four to go up. Then we'll go five, six, seven, and then we, so let's keep it there at seven, and we know we'll have 10 there nine, and then eight. So we'll go seven, eight, nine, and then finish up 10. So we're gonna go all the way around. It's best to calculate that before you really start going. It'll help keep you um, in place. And I'll do that, you'll see me do that again um, once I'm about halfway through because I wanna stuff the face and I wanna be absolutely certain that the stitches are going where I said they were gonna go. stitch that stitch that stitch okay, and as I go I go down under both of those stitches into the face out through where we next calculated our stitch and let's go ahead and count it again we have one two three four five six stitches left on the snout which means we need to find our six places and we got one two three four five and we know we want to end where we began six so let's do our next one right here, in and out. And before I go any further, I wanna stuff this snout up just a little tiny bit. So we'll grab a little bit of stuffing. You don't need very much stuffing at all, just like this much. And we'll take the back of this and we'll just kind of stuff our nose up a little bit. This is actually too much, so I need to get a little bit of stuffing out of there. Don't forget to stuff your nose though, because if you forget the snout it's stuffed up and then it'll be kind of weird as you go. Just be like a deflated nose. Like your like your little red panda's got a got a head cold or something. Okay, just working our last few stitches here. And here's our last stitch which is the same as where we started through it. And then you want to come out where your tail end is right here. So you have something to double knot to. Okay. Make sure we tweak it so that we like where it is. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I like that. 
Now we can take these two ends and we can double knot them. There's one and two. And it's because we're coming out of the same exact stitch, we can stuff it back into our piece using the back of our needle. So we take our needle and go to that little knot, kind of stuff it in there, tweak your guy to hide that end in. There we go. So now we have the snout in place. Next thing we want to do is add our nose to the snout. So you want some brown yarn. You don't need very much. That's probably fine. And we'll thread it on our needle. And the first thing that I like to do is come, uh, we're going to start by coming in through somewhere on the body and coming out through near the bottom of the mouth, like right like that. And then you want to come down through the very center of the hole and come back out through where this first part's coming out. Like that. And then go back in through the center and come out through the left or the right. We're basically making a little T. Like that. And then you want to go across one, two, and then out again. And we're going to repeat that like four or five times. One, it's going to be two. You just want to really fill it in. Three. Four. And then for the last one, we're going to go in and then come out, go back into the body somewhere and then come out where your end is coming through like this. Okay, so we got our little nose. And then we could just double knot these two just like how we did with the sewing the snout on like that. Two, and you'll see we're going to do a very similar thing to this for the ears. Cut that close, throw that to the side, and then we're just going to take our needle and stuff that knot back into the face. There we go. So now we have our snout sewn on. Um, next up, let's add a tongue. So we want to grab some pink yarn. You don't need very much pink yarn at all. We're actually going to crochet this tongue. And what we want to do is we want to make a slip knot. So to make a slip knot, we're going to take your yarn, make a knot like this. Okay, so make a loop over and then fold that loop over the piece like so. And then pull the inside right here out and it creates a little loop that when you place your crochet hook into that loop, you can pull the end attached to the yarn and it pulls that loop nice and tight. And what we want to do is we want to chain three. So we're going to yarn over, pull it through the chain. I like to do a real good scoop. So there's one, two, and three. That creates three little chains there. And what we want to do is do a half double crochet into the first chain that you made, but you want to work into the back loop of the chain. So what we, what we can do here is find out what the back loop is. So if you look at the top or at your chains, they're split into three different parts. We got your top loop, that's right here. You got your bottom loop, that's right here. And then if you spin it around, you see these little spine loops. Those are your back loops. So we want to work into the first back loop that we have right here with your crochet hook. We want to do a half double crochet into that stitch. For a half double crochet, let's get our crochet hook in there. You want to yarn over and then insert your hook into the stitch. We're going to go into this back chain. Now you want to go into this back chain and you want to use your nail to kind of help pry your, uh, your loop over your crochet hook. And then yarn over, pull that through, and then yarn over. And you should have three loops on the hook. We're going to pull that through all three loops. It really helps you do a scoop there. It's going to make a little tiny tongue. And then we want to yarn over again and do a chain. So we're going to pull that through the loop on the hook and then just pull that all the way through. Okay, you might want to cut your yarn there if you had a little bit 
too long of yarn. In fact, this is a little long. So we'll go ahead and cut that. Now we just want to sew this tongue onto the face. Now, of course, you don't want to sew the tongue on if you don't want a tongue, but I do want the tongue on because I think it's cute. So we're going to take one of these ends, thread it on our needle. I'm, I'm going to go in through right here on the bottom of our face and come out somewhere on our body. And then we're going to thread the other end on the needle. We're going to go through one stitch over from that right here and come out through the same stitch on the body so that both of our ends are coming out of the same spot. We're going to pull both these ends nice and tight so that they really pull into our stitches as much as we can. Now be careful, you don't accidentally want to like break your yarn. You just want to pull it tight enough so that it pulls it tight into the face and then do a double knot. One and two. Cut it close. Put that to the side and then take the end of your na uh, needle and just stuff that into the face like that. And now he's got his little tongue out. That <laughs> It's so cute. All right, so the last thing we want to do for our face is we want to add two little ears here. So let's start by crocheting those ears. Put those to the side. And you want to get your off-white yarn. And we're going to make two of these. So take your off-white yarn. We're going to start with a magic loop. The, the ears are going to be made, um, this going to be started the exact same way as the snout was. So we're going to make a magic loop and pull it somewhat tight. And we're going to do six single crochets into the magic loop, just like how we did for round one of the snout. We're going to do the same thing for round one of the ears. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we want to take this tail end and pull it nice and tight. And that'll be the end of round one. Now, just like the ears, there are only a limited amount of rounds here. So I'm not going to use the stitch marker just because it's not that tough. So we're going to start by doing, uh, for round two, we're going to do one single crochet and then an increase repeated three times around that will bring you up from six stitches to nine stitches. So we're going to go into our first stitch right here, one single crochet, and then into the next stitch, an increase. So go into the next stitch here, do two single crochets for an increase. One and two. And then we're going to repeat that three times total. So let's do our second repeat. Single crochet one, increase one. There's one and two. Now one more, single crochet one, and then increase one. Ah. There we go. One and two. That's going to be the end of round two for the ear. Now for rounds three and four, so two more rounds, we want to do a single crochet into each stitch around. Pretty, uh, pretty easy. Just make sure to count your stitches. There should be nine stitches around for each round. So we'll just count. One, two, three. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to do that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then to finish up the ears, you're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch right here. Pull through, pull through, and then cut the yarn long enough to sew it onto the head. Ah, there we go. And just pull that all the way through. Now you want to make two of these ears, so go ahead and make a second ear 
and then I will show you how to sew it onto the face. Okay. So let's take our head and we want to start by threading the middle of the ear. And we want to go somewhere. So we want our ears to be like this. So I've already made the second ear so we can kind of get it into place like that. Okay, so we want it to be like that and then we're going to add some detail to the ears. So first thing we want to do, we thread the middle of the ear, middle yarn there, get into place. And then we just want to push this through the stitches and then out somewhere close like that. Now you don't need to stuff the ears at all when you sew it on. So we can actually just go and sew it, sew it on. And you want to sew it flat. Okay. So you want this to be really flat because it's an ear. So you hold it into place and all the stitches that I go down, I probably want to go through back up. So let's start like right here, come out through a stitch on the side. Let's make sure that's where we want it. Yeah, that's gonna be cute. Okay, so we wanna go through the next stitch here, into the stitch, and we're just gonna start going down the head. Let's make sure that we want it, because we want it kind of be to be like pointed down like that. I think that's really cute. Well, yeah, actually, let's go down right through here. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so you can see I keep checking to make sure that it's where I want it to be. And I kind of think that, I kind of think it should be back one. So I'm going to go back in and out through right here instead. And then sew onto the next stitch. And then come down the stitch. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Next stitch, next stitch, out through down one. This stitch, this stitch. Now I'm gonna go across one stitch. Like that. Now let's make sure we have enough stitches to sew it on. We got one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna end here. There's one, two, three, four, five. So it should be good. One. There we go. Come out through where we started. So that last one on. And I want to come out through the back, right where we came out with the first end that, pull it nice and tight, make sure our ears just how we want it to be. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And then we want to just double knot this. One and two. Cut the yarn nice and close. And push that knot in with the back of your needle. Now with the next ear, I wanna sew it on um, through the same row so that they're lined up as best as we can. Okay, so we really wanted to make sure that it's sewn on like as similarly as we can to the first one like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this second ear on and I'll be back in just a sec to show you how we can do detail on the ears. Okay. Just about finished the ear now. Get the end of our needle and just stuff that little knot back in. And the last thing we want to do before we work onto the body is we want to add some detail to the inside of the ear, which is so cute. Here's what it looks like when we're finished. So you can see what we're doing there. So we need some brown yarn for this. We don't need too much brown yarn. Um, let's go with like, maybe like that much. Let's try that much and see how it goes. We'll thread that onto our needle. 
And we're going to go in through, um, I'm going to go in through the back right here and then come out of just the very bottom of the ear right there. Okay. Now, wherever you come out of, that's going to be our anchor point for all of the points that we're going to do here. We're going to do basically like a little leaf kind of shape. Five points up. Come up. We're going to go through a stitch up and to the right and then come back out through our anchor point. Like that. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over each of the stitches once and then come back and do it again. So let's go to the next stitch up from the ear right here. Come out through our anchor point. And then one stitch up right here. And then out through our anchor. And then one stitch down right here. Out through the anchor. And then finally one stitch down from there and then out through the anchor. Okay, now you can stop there if you want, if you feel like that is just enough for your ear. But I kind of like, uh, uh, Lemon Yarn Creations did it twice and I really liked it a lot. So I'm going to go do that too. I'm going to go just repeat that process one more time just to double up each of these stitches and really... Really add some uh, texture to the ears. Out through the anchor. I'm kind of seeing how it's doubling up now. And then last stitch right here. And we don't need to come out through the anchor for this last one. Instead, we want to go through the middle of the body somewhere. And then out through where we came out with our, or where we started with our end. So that both the ends are coming out through the same stitch. Ah. There we go. Like that. And then we can just double knot these two ends on the inside. And it looked like we had just a little bit more brown yarn than I thought, so probably cut back a little bit on our next ear. But I don't think this is enough, so we're gonna need a little bit more than that. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other ear, and um, when I get back, we can begin work on the, um, let's see, what do we work on after this? Oh, the back legs, so we can start making all the legs. There we go. So I'll go ahead and make our other ear, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so now that we have finished our head, we can start working on the legs of our um, red panda. We're going to start with our back legs, which is a very unique um, way to crochet these legs. We're going to start with a magic loop, which <laughs> obviously you know how to do that. And I'll just go ahead and get that started right here. And we're going to be using our brown yarn for this. Okay. Now once you have your magic loop, we're going to start by single crocheting six times into the center of the magic loop, which is the same as how we've started uh, a lot of these um, parts of this pattern. Uh, this is actually how I usually start my patterns, is by single crocheting six into a magic loop. Uh, yeah, just makes it easiest. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then we can close it nice and tight and grab some of our yarn for keeping track of our rounds. Let's tighten it just a little bit more. There we go. And I'm just going to crochet around, around our stitch marker for the start of round two. Okay, we can leave this long. All right, so for round two, we're going to be single crocheting into the first two stitches and then doing an increase into the third. And then we'll repeat that one more time. So let's start by doing our first repeat. We'll single crochet two. There's one. And then here is our 
second single crochet, and then we'll do an increase into the third right here, which means two single crochets. So one, two, and then three and four are an increase, and then we'll repeat that one more time. So we'll go two, one, two, and then three and four. And that's going to bring you up from six stitches in round one to eight stitches in round two. Pull my stitch marker up and flip it over. I'm also going to pull this center just a little bit more, close that tighter. Okay, so that's the end of round two. For round three, four, and five, three rounds in a row, we're just going to be single crocheting into each stitch around. So just a single crochet all the way around, eight stitches in each round. So make sure to keep count at least for your first round to make sure that you're on track. But nice, easy single crochet for three rounds. And again, if you like this pattern, please, please like and subscribe down below. Um, you can share your pattern with us. Uh, we have a, there is um, a subreddit for club crochet. This is, that is brand new. Um, it's just reddit.com slash r slash club crochet. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. There's a discord for club crochet. Uh, and you can share it on Instagram as well. Uh, if you use hashtag club crochet, that's the best way to let it be seen by everybody that's a fan of club crochet. And of course, make sure to tag, um, uh, make sure to tag Andrea with at Lemon Yarn Creations. I'll put links to her, uh, all her social media stuff in the description as well. Pull that up. Okay, now I'm on my third round of single crochets. This will be round five. Just a few more stitches. Ah, there we go. Okay, here's going to be our last single crochet. That'll be the end of round five. We'll pull our stitch marker up. Hey, it really wants to get connected to that other one. All right, so now you're going to want to stuff your uh, leg up to this point. Uh, you don't want to stuff it anywhere past here, so this is a good place to have it stuffed. Um, basically, what you want to do is have your... Here is a finished version of the leg, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But you can see how just the end of it is going to be stuffed, and then the rest of it is going to be flat, so that it sits flat against the um, body of your red panda. So we just want to stuff it just a tiny bit to right there. Honestly, that might be more than enough stuffing. Pull a little bit out. It might be easier to stuff it a little bit later, um, but just make sure that you don't stuff it past this point. That's, that's the important part of what I'm trying to say here is don't stuff it past here. Okay. Okay, so now we are on to round six. Let's pull our stitch marker up. For round six, we're going to increase into the next three stitches. So three increases in a row, and then we'll single crochet to the end of the round. So let's start by doing our three increases. Here's our first one and two. Here's our second, three, four, and our third, five, and six. So each of those um, increases were all worked into one stitch each. So there's an increase, there's an increase, there's an increase. And then we want a single crochet to the end of the round. That's five more single crochets. And this will bring you up uh, from eight stitches, which is what you should have in uh, the end at the end of round five, to 11 stitches. So you should have 11 stitches at the end of round six here. There we go. All right, and that's going to be the end of round six. Pull our stitch marker up. Now for round seven through nine, so that's three rounds in a row, uh, we're just going to be doing single crochets into each stitch around. 
Another opportunity for you to make sure that you have the right yarn count. You should have 11 stitches for each round. Ooh. And that is um, for three rounds of just single crochet. So not, not really too complicated. Just do single crochet stitches all the way for three rounds. Now, because I just did that for our, um, <laughs> our other three rounds, I'm going to go ahead and quickly make these three rounds of just single crochet stitches. And I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, and that's going to be the last round, uh, last stitch for round nine. You got three rounds of single crochets now. And we can pull our stitch marker up. A little bit more brown yarn. There we go. For our final round, round 10, you want to do five invisible decreases and then one single crochet. So let's start with just our five invisible decreases. We're going to go into the front loops. So front loop, front loop. And then invisible decrease. So there's one, two, three, four, and then our final one right here is five. So that's five invisible decreases and then one single crochet into our last stitch right there. There we go. And then we can finish up by doing a slip stitch into the next stitch right there. Just a slip stitch, which is what we're going to need for sewing this onto our body. And then we can cut our yarn, um, leaving just a somewhat of a long end. That should be good enough. And then we'll just pull that through like that. And again, you only want to have the very front of this stuffed so that the back of it can be flattened like that. And there is one of our back legs. You want to make two of these back legs. And they're very, it's a very interesting way to sew this onto the body later on. So I think you're going to really find it interesting. Um, Andrea did some really cool things in her pattern that I don't normally do in my patterns, but they really um, opened my eyes to new ways to sew pieces together so I think it's really cool so we'll place this to the side and we'll get started on our front legs um, I call them legs they're kind of like arms at least in the pattern itself you can see how they're kind of like little noodly arms <laughs> they're very easy to make um, and yeah let's get some more brown yarn the front legs are going to be made with our brown yarn and we're gonna start exactly how we started our last leg we're gonna start with a magic loop like that and six single crochets into the center of the magic loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We want to pull that tight and grab our stitch marker. Our stitch marker is going to be somewhat important in this part um, just because we are going to be repeating the next round over and over till we get to the end of the legs so yeah so we'll hold our stitch marker in place now for our next seven rounds that's round two three four five six seven and eight seven rounds total you want to just do a single crochet into each stitch around so six single crochets around each round um, as you go it becomes both easier and more difficult to do these single crochets because you'll have to like pinch your piece so you can see um we're working on our second round right now and it's a little easy because i can just pinch my piece and just get into each stitch individually but as we go it'll start to like create a little tube which you'll see in just a, a round or two let's pull the stitch marker up there's that first round done we want seven rounds of this make sure that you work around your stitch marker and you can see as we're going further along, it's starting to like funnel out. So this is the wrong way though. We don't want it to funnel so it or, or bend in so it's like this. We want it to bend the other way. So we're gonna fold it out so that our V's are on the outside. Just like how, so that the stitches look just like how our other um, stitches look on their head and our back legs, stuff like that. So just keep doing single crochets around. You want seven rounds of this. 
And as you can see, as you get taller and taller here, it's easier just to pinch it at the base of it to help you work into your piece instead of trying to get your finger in there and working it like that, which is how we worked our, um, our head and pieces where you can get your finger in there a little bit easier. But for this round, or from, from here on, because these stitches are just, there's just not many to work with, it's easier just to pinch it closed. Now I'm working on our third round of just single crochets. And I'll go ahead and quickly get to our last round here um, because I find it's easiest to do this when I um, when it's closest to my face. I know that sounds kind of weird, but when I'm working it really tight like this, it's, it's a lot easier for me when I like can bring it up really close to my face to make sure that I'm getting my crochet hook where I need it to be. All right, well, I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, and this is going to be the last stitch in our seventh round. Um, I'm going to count my stitches down. If you look at the top right here, this V will count down. Make sure that we have just seven rounds of this. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this one will be around one. So that's how you can make sure that you're in the right place. And then um, uh, I'm just going to pull this stitch marker out right now. There we go. And then I will finish up this by slip stitching into the next stitch right here. Just one slip stitch. It's gonna be used uh, to help us sew this onto the body. And then we can cut the yarn, uh, leaving just a long enough end so that you can sew it on and pull it all the way through, just like that. And you wanna make two of these. Um, and yeah, you can flatten it if you want, or you can yeah, we'll, we'll be sewing it around some pipe cleaners, uh, which I'll be showing you when we get to our body so that you can make your leg, uh, front leg more poseable. All right, so that's gonna be how to make the front legs. Next up, we'll be making our tail, which includes uh, some fancy color changes. So it's pretty fun to make. Okay, so for our tail, we're gonna be starting with our red yarn. Start with a magic loop, just like before, always making our magic loops. There we go. And round one of the tail is going to be exactly the same as uh, your leg. In fact, round one, two, and I think three are going to be very familiar to you. So we're gonna start by single crocheting six into the magic loop for round one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll pull it tight. Go ahead and grab our stitch marker. We won't need our stitch marker for, for very long in this pattern um, because when we end up doing our color changes, they kind of mark the end of our rounds for us. Okay, so that's the end of round one. For round two, we're going to be doing two single crochets and then an increase repeated once to go up from six stitches to eight stitches, which is exactly how you did um, the back legs before. So we're going to start by doing two single crochets. Here's our first one. We'll go one and two, and then an increase, three and four. And then we're gonna repeat that process one more time. So two single crochets, one and two, and then our increase, three and four. Okay, now you should have eight stitches around and that's the end of round two. For round three, nice and easy, single crochets into each stitch all the way around. We're just gonna work around our stitch marker here and do single crochets all the way around. Now, when you get to the end of this round, um, hold tight because we are going to change colors to off-white just at the very end. So don't, um, don't complete the last stitch too quickly because you might need to undo it to add, our, um, to add your white yarn. Okay, so this is gonna be our last stitch right there. And now we can in uh, bring in our white yarn. Now I'm gonna pull this stitch marker out just because it is just gonna get in our way now um, since we will be marking the ends of our rounds with this white yarn, it'll be a lot easier. 
and we want to change to white yarn. So what I like to do is hold the white yarn in between the two loops on the hook before you have completed your last round. So hold it in between those two and the yarn attached to the ball. I hold it down with my index finger of my dominant hand like that. And then I take my index finger of my non-dominant hand and I put it in between the two colors of yarn. And then I flip the new yarn under the old yarn. So in our case, we're going to flip the white yarn under the red yarn like that, and then hook onto our new color and pull the new color through the two loops on the hook, which will let us change colors. Let me pull it a little tighter. And um, we don't need to work around this. Instead, we're just going to pull this red yarn to the side. We'll come back to it after this round. And for round four, working in all off-white, we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. So just eight stitches all in our off-white color. So there's one, two, and now you can see why it's going to be easy to tell where the end of the round is because it's changed colors. And at the end of this round, we're going to be changing back over to red. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so here's the end of our round. There's seven, and this is going to be our eighth stitch. Now we want to change back to red. You can either cut the red yarn. Let's keep, let's get this tail end a little bit out of the way. You can either cut this red yarn and then pull it back in, just like how we started our red, or you can just pull the red yarn over like that and do the same thing where you're pinching the red yarn down with your index finger. I like to keep it just to give a little bit of space there, a little loop and then do the same thing where you hold it in between the, your index finger and you flip it under with the new color, yarn over with our new color, red, and pull it through. Okay, pull this a little tighter. And then I'm just gonna pull the white yarn to the side and we can continue on to round five. Now for round five and six, so two rounds in a row, we just wanna single crochet into each stitch around in our red yarn. So two rounds of just single crochets in red. And then we'll switch back to white. And you can kind of see we're making little stripes of uh, white in between two rounds of red. That's what, that's what this pattern is going to end up being. And what I really like about this um, tail pattern, which you'll see when we come to the end, is how she um, closes it up. She does this really cool thing to close it up. So there's the end of our first uh, round of single crochets, round five. Now we're on to round six and just doing another round of just single crochets around. Eight single crochets total. Gotta make sure not to work around any of these colors as you're going around the tail ends. You wanna ignore them as much as we possibly can. Because if you end up working around your white yarn, it'll start to bleed through your stitches, and you don't want that. You don't want your colors to you to be able to see your colors through your stitches. I, I at least don't really like that. Okay, so this is going to be the end of round six, our round of just single crochets. And we want to change back to our white yarn. So we're going to take our white yarn and do exactly what we did with our red. Make a little loop, hold it down with our index finger and then switch over to our white yarn by going with our index finger and just flipping it under, yarning over with a new color and pulling that through the two loops to start with our new color. Okay. Now we are on to round seven. Now round seven, we're not just doing single crochets around. We're using our all, this is all gonna be in our off-white yarn, but we're gonna start with an invisible decrease and then do single crochets for the rest of the round. So to start with our invisible decrease, we're gonna go front loop and front loop, and then do a single crochet into that. So there's our invisible decrease, and then we wanna do six single crochets to get to the end of this round, all in our off-white. So one invisible decrease, and then six single crochets. So one, two, three, There's four, five, and here's our last stitch, six. Now we can get our red yarn, 
make sure not to use the tail end. Instead, we're going to use the end attach the ball of yarn. And we're going to do the same thing, pull it over and switch back to red. There we go. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round seven. For round eight and nine, two more rounds. We're just going to be single crocheting in our red yarn, pull our white yarn to the side. We're going to be doing our red yarn, just doing single crochets in each stitch around, and there should be seven stitches total. So just single crochets for two rounds in all red. So there's two, three, four, there's five, and There's our six and seven. And that's going to be the first round of single crochets. Now let's do one more in our all red for round nine. We're just doing another round of just single crochets in red. Three, four, five. Six. And this is going to be our seventh. And that's going to be the end of round nine. Now we want to change back over to off white for one more last round of off white. Let's get this stitch mark out of the way. It's getting a mess. Okay. So we want to change back over to our off white yarn. Pull through with off white. And for round 10, our last round in off white. We're going to be doing an invisible decrease into our first stitch. So we'll go front loop. It's easiest to use your nail and kind of help pry that stitch over. There's front loop and front loop. And boom, invisible decrease. And then uh, five more single crochets to go to the end of the round, all in our off white. So one invisible decrease and then five single crochets. One. Two, three, four, and here's our last stitch, five. Now we want to change back to our red, because we are done with our off-white, like so. We can actually cut our off-white yarn now. And see how it's kind of looped around? So we can kind of just pull that through. And we actually don't need any more um, off-white yarn, I think, for the rest of this pattern, I say with a question mark. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure we don't need off-white. Okay, so now we're on to round 11. Now round 11 is going to be all in our red yarn, and we're just going to be doing a single crochet in each stitch around. There should just be six stitches around. All in red. One. Two, three, four, there is five, and our final one right here is six. There we go. Pull our, I'm going to pull my loop out just a little bit. Um, you want to if you haven't yet cut your red yarn or cut your white yarn, um, I'm going to leave this tail end of my red yarn just a little long so that I have something to sew this onto uh, with at the end. And finally, we want to stuff this up. So we want to work our stuffing into our piece. Um, I'm going to grab a little stick that'll help me stuff it up a little bit easier. I find this can be very helpful when stuffing up something really uh, thin like this is to use a little skewer stick or a pencil instead of the back of my crochet hook because the back of my crochet hook can work really well if this end is just a little bit bigger. Okay, so you want to stuff it up. You don't want to stuff it too much. That's probably, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, get our crochet hook back in there. And now for our last round, we're going to be working in through both layers to close it up. Okay, so that 
sounds kind of confusing. And uh, for me, this was the first time I've ever done this, but it's really cool. We're going to make this really flat um, by working into both, uh, both sides at the same time. So here's how it's done. First off, we want to get this red yarn kind of out of the way. Now we're going to take your crochet hook. You're going to go into the next stitch. And then you're going to work around to get into, let's get my needle, help you, help show it off. We're going to go through this stitch and through this stitch, which is our last stitch that we made in our last round simultaneously. So we need to get our crochet hook over through that other stitch like that. And then we'll, ah, let's try that again because we want our yarn on the inside there. There we go. Then we yarn over, pull through. We're gonna pull through both of those layers simultaneously and yarn over and pull through like that to do a single crochet. So it's single crocheting through both sides at the same time. The first one is the hardest. After that, it gets pretty easy. You do this stitch and then the stitch right across and then do a single crochet. And then the last one right here is pretty easy because you don't really need to go across. Instead, you can just go like next to it like that. So you kind of go through that bit right there. Like that. There you go. It's only three stitches total, but it really flattens the end there. It kind of closes it up. And then now it's this is really, really easy to sew onto the body later on. Um, yeah, you can also do this for the arms as well if you don't want to add uh, um, uh, pipe cleaners in the arms. But I like to add the pipe cleaners personally. And to finish it up, all you need to do is um, I'm going to chain one and then cut the yarn. You don't need very long of an end. That's probably just fine. And just pull that all the way through. And we'll be using these two ends to sew it onto the body uh, uh, in a little bit. Okay. Now we can finally get working on our body. Okay, so for the body, we're going to be starting with our, our red yarn. We're going to start with a magic loop. And the start of our round here is going to be very similar. We're just going to start by single crocheting um, for our first round six times into the magic loop. So six single crochets into the magic loop for round one of the body. Of the body. One, two, <laughs> three four, five, and six. And then we can pull this tight. Let's get our little handy dandy stitch marker here. Place it in between so we can work around it. Now this tail end is not gonna be um, used for sewing anything closed. So we do wanna work around this tail end for our first round, for our first uh, few stitches. And round two of the body, we're going to be doing an increased stitch into each single crochet around to bring you up from six stitches to 12 stitches. So here's your first stitch. Let's go ahead and get into our first one. We're going to do an increased stitch into that stitch. And I want to make sure to work around this tail end as I do that increased stitch. So there's one single crochet and then into the same exact stitch. Two single crochets worked around this tail just for that first stitch. Okay, and we're gonna do an increase all the way around. So there's one. There's our second increase in our fourth stitch total. Here is five and six for our third increase. Seven and eight, nine, 10, and then our last one right here is going to be 11 and 12. There you go. And that's going to be the end of round two for your body. Let's pull our stitch marker up and fold it over. Now I can actually cut this tail end nice and close now because we don't need it at all. Toss that to the side and keep working around. All right. So now we're on to round three of the body. For round three, we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch right here and then an increase into the next stitch. Okay, so one single crochet, one increase, and we're gonna repeat that all the way around six times repeated total, uh, which will bring you up from 12 stitches to 18 stitches. So let's do our second repeat. One single crochet and an increase. 
and then a single crochet and an increase single crochet increase and you see what I mean we're just repeating that all the way around this is going to be the exact same way that we started the head as well but that was a little while ago so okay and that's going to be the end of round three let's pull our stitch marker up for round four we're going to do the same uh thing as we did in our head we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase repeated six times all the way around to go up from 18 to 24. so let's start it we're going to do two single crochets one two and then an increase into the next right here three and four so we're going to repeat that process of two single crochets then an increase all the way around two single crochets one two and then our increase three and four one two three and four three and four okay just a few more and again you should have 24 stitches by the end of this round if you uh would like to count and our next round is going to be pretty fun. We're going to start doing some cool color changes. Three and four. All right, and that's going to be the end of round four. For round five, six, and seven, so our next three rounds, and really the rest of the body, you're going to be doing a lot of color changes in it. So we're going to be changing from red to brown so that we can make the front half of the body brown and the back half of the body red. So that uh, it's going to be kind of complicated, but um, we're going to work through it one stitch at a time. It won't be too hard. And it, honestly, this is actually a really fun way to learn your color changes as well if you're um, pretty new to color changes. Okay, so we're going to start um, rounds five, six, and seven are the exact same. So each of these three next three rounds are made the exact same way. So I'm just going to show you how to do it in a very slow detail. So we're going to start by single crocheting six times in red. Now, if you're following along in the pattern, you'll see little brackets with a letter um, R for red and BR for brown. So when you see a bracket that says bracket R, it means change to red. Now, this one says bracket R single crochet six. So we don't really need to change to red as, as much as stay uh, crocheting in red. So we're going to crochet six times in red. And then after those six single crochets, we're going to change to brown. So two, three, four, five. And when we get to six like that, we want to hold for a second and grab our brown yarn. We're going to place it in between. And we're going to do just like we did on the uh, tail. We're going to pinch down our um, yarn with our index finger. And then with our opposite index finger, we're going to flip it under yarn over with our new color and pull that through the stitch like that i'm going to pull our stitch a little tighter and we're going to take our red and just place it to the side and we're going to do 12 single crochets in our brown yarn one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and here's going to be 12. Now i'm going to hold for a second and we're going to take your scissors and cut the end of your red yarn okay you want to leave just a little bit left over um, so that it doesn't come apart but you don't need very much at all and then you're going to take your red yarn place it in between the colors to change back to brown or back to red rather okay so six in red 12 in brown and then six more in red we're going to take your brown yarn just toss it to the side you can cut it now if you'd like to and we're just going to do our last single crochets in red one two three 
four, five, and six. And then take our blue yarn, fold it over, and now we can cut our brown yarn. We'll come back to it in just a sec. Now, like I said, our three, um, we want three rounds of the exact same uh, color changes. Okay, so all three of the next uh, rounds are all the same as this. So uh, there's our first round. Let's do, let's repeat that round one more time. And then the third time I'll uh, go ahead and do it off camera. So we'll do six single crochets in red. One, two, three, four, five, and there's six. And then we'll grab our brown yarn, place it in between and switch over to brown. Oops, almost lost that brown yarn there. There we go. Toss the red yarn to the side. And then we're going to do um, 12 single crochets in brown. One, two, three, four. And honestly, I don't really need to count this because I know exactly that we've done 12 um, single crochets in brown in our last round. So where the end of the round, end of the brown stitches are right here is going to be the end of our 12 single crochets in brown. So now we can cut our red yarn. Untangle it a little bit, and then we're going to switch back to red. And we're going to pull our brown yarn to the side and then do six single crochets in red. One, two, three, four, five, and here is six. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round six. Now we want one more round um, that's e exactly the same as that last round. So one more round of the same exact color changes, uh, and then we'll be doing something a little bit different after that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do our round seven here, which is the same as round six. And I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round seven. Pull our stitch marker up. And now we are on to round eight. For round eight, we're going to start by doing our six single crochets in red to get to our brown, and then we're going to do some decreases when we get to our brown yarn. So let's do six single crochets, Oops. six single crochets in red. One, two, three, four, Five, and then here is six. Let's go grab our brown yarn now. Let's switch over to brown. There we go. Now in our brown yarn, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut our red yarn now just to keep it out of the way. In our brown yarn, we want to do one invisible decrease and then eight single crochets, and then another invisible decrease at the end of our brown yarn. So uh, that's all our brown stitches. So we're gonna do one invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, and single crochet, and then six single crochets, one, I mean eight single crochets, sorry, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here is our eighth single crochet, and then a, another invisible decrease. So invisible decrease, eight single crochets, and then one last invisible decrease. And before I finish that invisible decrease, you wanna grab our red yarn and change back to red. Okay, so we change to red now. There we go. Pull the brown to the side. And now with your red yarn, you wanna do four single crochets and then a, an invisible decrease to finish up the round. So four single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then an invisible decrease. So front loop, front loop, ba-doop, ba-doop. We'll pull our stitch marker up like that. 
That'll be the end of round eight. You should have 21 stitches now at the end of round eight. For round nine, we're going to just be doing single crochets into each stitch, but of course, when we get to our color changes, we're gonna do color changes. So we'll start by doing um, six single crochets in red. Two, three, four, five, here is six. And then we'll grab our brown yarn. We'll change to brown. And then we're going to do 10 single crochets in brown. Go ahead and cut the red just to keep it out of the way. There we go. And then we're gonna do 10 single crochets in brown and then come back to our red yarn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here is our 10th one. Grab our red yarn again. There we go. And then we'll finish up this round by doing uh, five more single crochets in red. One, two, three, four, and here is our fifth single crochet in red. Pull our stitch marker up. All right, and that's the end of round nine. For round 10, we're gonna be decreasing again uh, in the pretty much in the exact same spots as we decreased in round eight. Um, we're gonna start by single crocheting six in our red yarn. One, two, three, four, five, and six, but we're gonna stop before that, grab our brown yarn place it in between and switch to brown. And now we're going to be doing an invisible decrease in brown. We'll pull our red to the side there. We'll start by doing an invisible decrease in brown. So front loop, front loop. There we go. And then we'll do um, six single crochets. So one invisible decrease, six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then another invisible decrease at the end of our brown yarn. And then we'll switch back to red. to the side and now with our red yarn we want to do three single crochets and then an invisible decrease in red so three single crochets one two three and then an invisible decrease so front loop front loop there we go pull our stitch marker up that's going to be the end of round 10. let's cut our brown yarn Okay, we only have a couple more rounds left. For round 11, we're going to work around our stitch marker and we're gonna do six single crochets in red to get to the start of our color changes in brown. And we're not gonna be doing many decreases here. So we just need to do all uh, single crochets this time. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six in red. And then get our brown yarn ready. We'll change back to brown. We go and then we'll be doing eight single crochets in brown one two i'm going to go ahead and cut this red yarn since we're going to just come back to it in a second three four five six seven and here is our eighth one in brown 
and then switch back to red. And then we'll do a single crochet in red to the end of the round. So just uh, four more single crochets in red. One, two, three, and four. Pull our stitch marker up, even though this next round is gonna be our last round. Let's cut our brown yarn. Okay, now for our very last round, we're going to do four single crochets in red and then an invisible decrease. One, two, three, four, and then an invisible decrease. Then we're going to grab our brown yarn, change to brown. Like that. Pull the red to the side there. And we will do three single crochets in brown. One. Oopsies, there we go. Two. Three, another invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop. Okay, so three single crochets, invisible decrease, and then three more single crochets in brown. One, two, and uh, this will be three. And then we're going to change back to red so we can cut our red yarn. go. Pull it brown nice tight. And look at how much yarn I had left on brown. I had the perfect amount. This is exactly how much you want because we do need to sew it on with our brown yarn. But let's finish up this round first. So we did our three single crochets in brown, invisible decrease, three single crochets in brown, and then we changed to red. And for our last few stitches, we want two single crochets in red. One, two, and then an invisible decrease to finish it up. One and two. Okay. Now to finish up our body, we want to slip stitch into the next stitch in red. And you want to cut. Now you do want a decent amount of red here. Let's go with like that much because we are going to so be sewing this onto the face. And then all these stitch markers we can get rid of. go just pull them all the way out we're actually totally done with our stitch marker because we are done crocheting actually so we can throw that crochet hook away and uh, now we can start sewing everything together so we want to start by um, I, I like to start by sewing on the arms first so what you want to do is we'll have a pipe cleaner here this is a full size of a pipe cleaner and I like to fold it in half first and then cut our pipe cleaner in half. You be careful about your scissors. This will harm your scissors. Um, so if you, if you don't want to do any damage to your scissors, maybe use some other ones instead or a, uh, a, a wire cutter. Okay. So now we have two halves of pipe cleaners and we want to fold these pipe cleaners in half. And then I like to just, Fold it in half and twist it all the way up till there's only a little bit showing. We'll grab our arm. Okay, so I'm just twisting it up. Make sure it's about the length of your arm. If you put it in the arm like that, it the end of the pipe cleaner uh, twist should be right at the end like that. And we'll go ahead and do this with this other one as well. Just twist it up. These are going to be kind of like skeletons or skeletons for a piece. And that's probably pretty good. I can twist it like once, twice more. Okay, now we want to pick where we want all of our body pieces. So first we want to make sure that these ends are out of the way a little bit. And um, all of our arms and legs are going to be basically where the seam of the red and the brown change colors. So it's going to be like right there. 
Okay, so what you want to do is start by grabbing your um, pipe cleaner, and we're going to do a stitch just below, like right, go like right here and here. And I like to take both of these ends and go through two different stitches, so we'll go right through there, right through there, like that. Okay, get those ends of the pipe cleaners as far in as you can. And then on the inside, I'll twist these pipe cleaners and then just fold this, these pipe cleaners out and down. And then we'll take your arm, we'll fit it over the pipe cleaner like that. And we're just gonna sew this onto your piece. So I like to thread the inside first and I'll put the inside one on the second of the two places that we put our pipe cleaner in so instead of right there we're gonna go right here and we're gonna crochet around the six stitches around this center part so let me show you what that means so there'll be six stitches around this so if we start from right here we go one two three four five and then six will be up here somewhere and then we'll just crochet it around We'll go one, two, thread this other end. I don't like the arms to be sewn right up to the top. I'd like um, one round below it, just because it gives us some room for actually sewing our head onto the body, which can be a little bit difficult. So I like to give a little bit of room there if I can. Then we'll just keep going around. And you can sew on the legs. You can sew on all these. Um, the only part you really need to sew on before you stuff it and sew the head on is the arms. Uh, but you can sew all of the pieces on before you sew the head on if you feel more comfortable with that, which I usually feel more comfortable with that, to be honest. Okay. And then here's our last stitch. there okay so there's one arm sewn on and then once you have it sewn on you can double knot these two on the inside and we can cut it nice and close there's one and two go ahead and cut that close toss these to the side and now because it's sewn around a pipe cleaner it should be uh, moldable is what I like to say, like posable, I guess is the better word to say it. All right, so next, let me show you how to crochet one of the legs. Now, the legs are going to go on the bottom right here so that they just go over the end like that. And they're, it's actually a very unique way to sew these legs on. The first part, um, like before, is we want to sew on uh, the inside of the two because you have these two ends, right? You want to sew the inside on first. And you want this a little further back than the seam itself. So like right, right there. So I'll go ahead and start by going like, let's go like right like that. And I can actually, I can do like, a, like this instead. I just come out through some, a stitch that's pretty close. And then take our other end. And this should also have six stitches. So we can just work the six stitches around where we put in. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. That should work pretty well. Just make sure that it's on right. Like that, and then we'll go one, two. Okay, and then all these stitches will just find their way. And then I'll show you, this. it's gonna look weird when you first start to sew on this leg, uh, and I'll show you how to make it flat, make it a lot better. Okay. One, two, three, four, yep. Just gotta make sure we count our stitches. One, two, three, four, yes, okay.
Okay, a few more stitches here. Come out right there. Head back in. Now you can see when we sew this on, it's just going to be like sticking far out, which is not what we want. We want it to be flat against it, right? So what we want to do is you want to come out through right here. Make sure it goes around our piece. And then you want to go through the inside of the leg right there and come out through a stitch like that. And then go back down through the body. And now you could do this, in fact, let's just do it twice just to be safe. I'm just going to go up a stitch and do that again on the body. But this will keep it flat against the body, you know, like that. So you can do it twice if you want, just to, just to really um, make certain that it's sewn flatly against the body. So we'll go boop, boop, then back into the body. And then we're going to come out where our, we went out with our other end. That. Oh, we go. And pull everything nice and tight. Flatten it up against the body. Like that. Yeah. And then we could just double knot these two ends on the inside. And that's going to be how you crochet on uh, the legs. Or sew on the legs, rather. Crochet on the legs. There we go. Cut that close. And we'll just that so that it hides the knot in there okay so we got our our legs sewn on um, I'm gonna sew the other two on in a second off camera the next thing I want to show you how to do is sew on the tail and it might be best to sew on actually you know what I'm gonna go ahead and sew on the other legs before I sew on the tail just so you know um, so it's easier to tell exactly where we want it to place because we want it to be perfectly in the center between the legs. So I'll go ahead and sew on the other legs and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I have my legs sewn on there. There we go. Now we want to sew on our tail. And the tail has two ends here. We want it to be right in between the legs, like right like that's probably pretty good. Yeah. So we're going to take First, our, um, we have two ends here. I want to take the end that's coming under this end. So this is the end that we did a chain and then we pulled through. I want to take this inside end first, thread that on a needle. We're going to place it where we want our tail. And we'll just go through right there. And I'm just going to come up somewhere on the body, like right like that. Then we can thread our other end of our tail. And then we'll go through, let's see, we've got four stitches to work with, right? Or three stitches, one, two, three. So we want to go in through one and then come out one, two, three. Let's go like that. So right down here, come out one. Then we're going to go around the stitch back in and then come out through the next stitch over. Do that again. And then again, and then we'll come out through where our first end came out, like that, and we can pull both of these ends and it'll pull it tight. Then we can just double knot these two and cut it close to sew it, or and then hide the end in there. One, and Two. Okay, cut that nice and close. Okay, make sure that knot gets hidden in there. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do is stuff our body up and then sew the head onto our body. So let's get our head into place. <laughs> I, I forgot about the tongue. It's funny. Okay, so let's start by stuffing up our guy just a little bit. We've got a little bit of stuffing here. And then you should have a pretty decent amount of extra threads that you used. Um, I highly suggest you yeah, go ahead and stuff our guy up with those. I'll use my stitch marker too. Kind of limit the amount of waste 
if you can. And we'll stuff it up just a little bit more before we finish sewing our head onto our body. Um, but let's start, you'll have two ends here, right? So we've got a brown end from the ends, uh, from these brown stitches and then an orange end, or I mean a red end from our red stitches. We're gonna start by sewing on the brown stitches onto our head. So we want our head to be perfectly on like, boop, like that. And this part could be a little bit tough to um, get the stitches exact, to be honest. I, I, it's kind of like a, not a guessing game, but like, I don't know. It just can be a little bit difficult. So we'll thread this brown end first. And I'm gonna come out through the top of our first brown stitch, like that. And then line our head up, like that. And I'm just going to kind of start sewing this on and I'm gonna to try to keep the head in place as much as I possibly can, exactly where we want the head. I'm just gonna go in through one stitch, come out through another. Like that, and then go through the next stitch. Go in through that same stitch and then come out through next one like right there and the important thing is you want to sew on the brown stitches with the brown yarn let's go with the next stitch right here let's see how we're looking so far that's pretty good so far Keep it in place. Brown. Go over one. It's pretty good. Do another brown stitch. And then we got one more brown stitch here. And I'm just gonna come out somewhere on the head, like go right, right there with our brown yarn. And then we're going to switch over to our red yarn. Okay, so we got our brown stitches there. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now we want to use this red yarn. Thread that on a needle. And this one's kind of weird because the end of the red is kind of in the middle of the round there. So what I like to do is get it into place, find where this one would go in, like right there probably, and then come out through the start of it, like right there, where your red stitches would start and then I'll go back around like that. And we'll try to hit where we went in right there. Sure, you get this brown yarn out of the way. Okay, let's go pull close. Okay, now we'll just start doing the same thing as we did with our brown yarn, but with red yarn in, out through wherever the next stitch is. And I'm consistently making sure that it's the head is being sewn on the way we want it to as I'm going, because it's really hard to undo this if you mess it up. And head, and we'll go next stitch right there. Stitch, stitch, next stitch right here. Go next stitch, next stitch, we'll come out through where we went in. Let's see here. This one on there, and then give it a look again. Make sure our head's being sewn on the way we want it to. <laughs> I 
His little tongue is so cute. Okay, almost done. Three more stitches. One. Oh, oh, before I continue, stuff the head, stuff the body up as much as you want now, um, because this is your last chance to do so. Whew, almost forgot about that too. Do not forget about that. Just stuff them up. Yeah, there we go. And the more stuffing you put in, the denser your um, your red panda is going to be, which is good because you want it to um, be dense so that you can hold it up a little bit easier. Like he he'll stand up, he'll she'll sit up a little bit better. Okay, so we just got two more. One, two. Let's go right here. And then last stitch in. And then I'm going to come out where I came out with that brown yarn. It's actually right next to my stitch right there. Just like that. And then we'll just double knot these and call it. One. And two. We cut our yarn. And then get that knot just back in there. And uh, tweak our panda a bit. Make sure all of our body parts are where we want them to be. And there we go. We have our little red panda crocheted. If you like this pattern, um, you might like some more of our endangered species crochet along patterns. Um, so this was part of a collaboration that we did with a bunch uh, with other Amy Groom yarders. So I made our little sloth here. This is Simon the sloth, my creation. Um, Simon's got magnets in his arms and legs so he can hold up like that. We also have uh, Mat Matumani the uh, black rhino. Uh, it's kind of hard to say his name, but it, his name means hope in Swahili. Uh, and this is a pattern by the uh, amazing Imigurumi artist, Sir Pearl Gray. All three of these patterns are part of a World Wildlife Fund um, and are available at clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day 2021. Um, you can also find each one uh, on the website as well. And yeah, if you like this video, please like it down below, subscribe to the channel, and uh, make sure to check out more of Lemon Yarn Creations uh, pieces. Uh, she's got a bunch of really cool patterns. You can find uh, links to her stuff in the description down below. You can find more of my patterns by just going to clubcrochet.com. And um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was quite a big pattern. I really hope you like it. If you liked it, uh, make sure to share this pattern with me with just hashtag Club Crochet. Um, you can also tag us on Instagram, and we even have a subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Club Crochet. All right, I think that's just about it. Thanks so much again for watching and crocheting this with me. Pasta la pizza, and happy hooking. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.